Hello everyone, once known as the IT hub of the world, the land of software and coders, India is now stepping into a new era. India is no longer just the brain behind global tech, it's becoming the powerhouse that builds it. Yes, the same India that once only used technology is now creating it, producing it, and leading it. For decades, the global semiconductor market was dominated by two giants, the United States, the master of chip design and advanced technology. China, the king of large-scale manufacturing. But now, a third force has entered the arena, India. India is not just digital India anymore. It's becoming Silicon India. Recently, India's electronics minister, Ashwini Vaishnav, made a groundbreaking announcement. 30 major Japanese companies are investing in India's semiconductor support ecosystem, especially in Gujarat, to supply everything needed for chip production, from ultra-pure gases and specialty chemicals to precision tools and micro-engineering equipment. This isn't about making chips yet, it's about building the entire foundation that makes chip making possible. Japan is helping India build a complete semiconductor ecosystem. Let's look at Gujarat, India's emerging chip hub. The government has already approved four massive projects. One Tata Electronics, setting up a mega chip fabrication unit in Dolera. Two Sanand unit, building advanced chip assembly lines. Three CG Power, establishing packaging and testing facilities. Four Kanish Sekon, investing in the analog chip sector. And now 30 Japanese companies are coming in to power these projects. Gujarat is no longer just India's manufacturing state. It's evolving into the chip kingdom of India. Now building chips isn't easy. It's one of the most complex engineering processes on earth. You need highly purified materials, ultra clean environments, precision gases, flawless synchronization across every step. And these are the areas where Japan excels and that expertise is now coming to India. So why is Japan betting big on India? The reasons are crystal clear. Over 20% of the world's semiconductor engineers are Indian. India has unmatched design talent and technical skill. It holds the seventh largest rare earth reserves in the world. A booming 6 to 8% GDP growth, one of the fastest globally, and most importantly, the youngest workforce on the planet. India has talent, market, and momentum. The government's India Semiconductor Mission, ISM, has already set aside $20 billion to drive this revolution, a fund aimed at building India's tech sovereignty. And with Japan joining hands, the mission is set to reach new heights. Now what does India stand to gain? One million new high-tech jobs, two, a new era of precision skills and workforce training, three, global technology transfer, four, quality manufacturing culture, five, and above all, an export explosion. Chips that India used to import will soon carry the label made in India. Of course, the road isn't easy. India still needs stronger financial systems, policy clarity, and deeper supply chains. But Japan's entry is closing those gaps fast. Recently, India even launched its own microprocessor, Vikram 3201, a major leap toward true technological independence. It's now clear. India is no longer just a user of global innovation, it's becoming the creator and producer. Japan's trust, India's vision, and the power of its young minds. Together, they're rewriting a story that once belonged only to America and China. This isn't just investment, it's the dawn of India's tech sovereignty. So the big question is, can India become the world's next chip capital within the next decade? Tell us your thoughts in the comments. Jai Hind. Long live innovation.